Today we're comparing three bows, all of which we've made on this channel. Bow number one, an oak bow with raw hide back. This bow comes up at 50 pounds at a 28 inch draw. Bow number two, Reflex Deflex Bamboo Backed Ipe Bow. This bow also comes at a 50 pound draw weight. I like it, so let's get right into the bow build. Bow number three, a reflexed Osage Orange Bamboo Backed Bow. This bow finishes at a 46 pound draw weight. On this YouTube channel, we make a lot of bows. There's a pile of bows I've made in staves. Hey look, there's some more up there. Not only so, but more bows. Oh look, more bows. Didn't make all of those, but I made some of those. Here's the thing. When is the last time I've revisited some of the bows I've made and shared where we're at? A year later in the case of two of these bows and three months later in the case of the other one. So that's what's happening today. I'm gonna show you what's happened to the bows because they've changed a little bit. I wanna tell you how they still perform, what I like, what I don't like, and which one of these three is my favorite. So to do this, we're gonna need to go to the range. First major difference I notice is the speed. Listen to these shots and just hear the difference in the speed of the arrow getting to the target. Both bamboo backed bows are much faster than the oak bow. I think the Ipe bow is even faster than the Osage bow, but it does have a little bit higher draw weight. The other highly noticeable difference is the noise. The Ipe bow is the loudest, and I don't know why for sure, but the Osage bow, quietest. Oak is just, I think, slightly louder. And that right there is with the exact same arrow, the exact same bowstring. As far as hitting where I want to, it's not too bad as long as I'm within 20 yards. This is all three different bows. It's actually Oak, Osage, and Ipe. As I continue to shoot, I've realized the Osage is the most comfortable to shoot, then the Oak, and then the Ipe, which is slightly surprising to me. And it's maybe because the poundage is so high on the Ipe, but it's really only two pounds heavier than the oak bow and it's longer. So I'm not sure if it's just the tiller or why it's not as comfortable to shoot. There's this thing called set and that's where over time the bow sets into place. I don't know if that's why it's called that, but you can see that this board is no longer straight because it's been bent many times over and over again. And I've noticed set has occurred most on the oak bow and secondly on the ipe bow. Moisture content has a lot to do with this, so it may not be 100% the wood, but it may have to do a lot with the moisture content. This is pretty common to where oak is gonna have more set than Osage for sure, and even more than ipe. Ipe was in the middle. The bows that are over a year old are both more poundage now than they were when I made them. Why is that? Well, because they've dried out some more. I didn't put a finish on either of these bows that would keep Keep moisture from coming out. So what I think has happened is the moisture content has been reduced as these thin pieces of wood now have been sitting for a year. And with that, both the poundages of the bows have increased. <laughs> My favorite target, the good old buffalo. We're taking a shot at 50 yards up in the ante. Let's do it. Osage bow, 50 yards. Okay, now that we did the Osage bow, I was really happy with those shots. Moving on to the oak bow. 
I could tell the arrow was slower, it dropped more. Let's try out the Ipe bow. The Ipe bow, <laughs> I used a lighter arrow too, and it just zipped. I aimed where I did for the other arrows, but let me show you the difference in the speed up here. Okay, middle two arrows is Osage. Of course, Ipe is above, and the oak is below but pretty happy with that. Guys, I'm telling you, it is not about the bow. Let me adjust with these two other bows. We'll do one shot with each bow. I'm starting with the oak bow. Ipe's up next. Okay, gonna try to round off the group with the Osage. I am telling you, once you hit that minimum level of standard in a bow, you can make any bow work great for you. That's one of the cool things about making your own bow is you can get good with it. Now comfort does matter and the more comfortable the bow, the easier it's gonna be to shoot. But we blend the bow way too much, way, way too much. And hey, I'm not a very good shot, but this is a 50 yard group here, a little over 10 inches with three different bows. Bring this to 20 yards and that group really tightens up. Now, if you just shoot the same bow, you can get quite good with it. Osage bow is a bow that was a bow and then I made it into another bow. My brother who wanted to make a bow, or I'm not sure if he wanted to, or I convinced him to try. So I gave him a stave, an Osage stave. He carved that stave down and got it to look like a bow. And then from that point I said, hmm, I wanna take this and make my own bow out of it. So I chased the growth ring and I finished out that bow in 2019. But then we had the bow here and I was like, this bow's okay. I wanna to try to make it better. So then I put bamboo on the back of it, retillered it, and I reflexed the limb tips. So this bow has had years to dry. I cut the tree down in like 2012, and it's been very thin material since probably 2014. So that, I'm not expecting in the next year to have any set occur because of how dry the wood already is. Plus, I finished that one properly. The tiller of your bow can change over time if the moisture content is released. And I believe that's happened with the oak bow. The tiller seems a little bit off and I don't remember it being that far off. And I think moisture has left the bow causing it to maybe bend slightly differently now than it did when I first tillered it. So keep that in mind. If your poundage goes up over time, or maybe your tiller slightly gets off, or maybe it's not shooting as smooth as you once thought it was, recheck your tiller, and it might just be a slight little correction, and then you can reseal the bow now that it's dry and good to go. Gear really matters. It matters a lot, but you're the one who shoots the bow. And so if you're like me, you like to blame your gear. Let's not blame our gear and let's just shoot the bow right. If you're liking this free content and wanna support me further, you can check out my Patreon, where you get a ton of benefits, all of these right here on the screen. I got a video over there explaining all the different levels. I just wanna show you real quick, a quick excerpt from the latest video I posted on Patreon. So I wanna set this table up uh, right over here for now. Um, I just have some, uh, it's just a basic two by four table. So I just have some screws to screw together. And if I can remember how this goes together, we'll be able to get this right over here. Oh, hey. Hey, that's kind of nice. All right, let's keep working. What is up, Team Shatterproof? I am here in the mess. And now, not just the garage feels like a mess, but my life feels like a mess. I've broken this camera twice in the last three months and had to set it in for repair. Ugh. I'm gonna need a reset up shop, which is annoying because it took me two days to pack everything up. On top of everything going on here, we just recently got robbed. Stay shatterproof, my friends. I will see you soon on the next video.